There we are. There's a boy. <laughs> that didn't hurt much, did it, huh? No. That's a good fella. All right. <laughs> Don't you worry. I wore one of those myself one time. You really he... think he'll be all right, Doc? Well, of course he will. He'll be doing the rumba before you know it. <laughs> so, uh, make him comfortable, will you, Joe? Can't the leg now. That's a boy. Dr. Mason's Cat and Dog Hospital. Hello. Hello, dear. Edgar, do you know what time it is? It's exactly 1021. Why? You should be home. It's just like you to be late for your own daughter's graduation. The biggest event in your life, and what are you doing? I was putting on a splint for the butcher. What's the matter with the butcher? Uh, uh, nothing wrong with the butcher, dear. The butcher's dog. Yeah, the dog broke his leg. And besides, Chris's graduation means just as much to me as it does to you. Your silly dog hospital is more important to you than your own daughter. How could well, you be I... so cruel, so no, heartless, well, as I'm... to deny Chris the happiness of having us at her side? You're selfish, inconsiderate, unreliable, and obtuse. I know... Most fathers would be proud, but not you. Oh, Joe. Why, Joe. Please, is more Hang up when she gets through talking, will you, please? Listen. The exercises begin at exactly 2 o'clock. When I married a veterinarian, I never expected him to spend all of his time in the doghouse. Drop whatever you are doing and come home immediately. Do you understand? Do you understand? Edgar, why don't you say something? Where are my pants? I don't wear them. Oh, I think I'll faint. Edgar, come down here. I have all your things right here. Now, hurry. <laughs> this is a big day for us, isn't it, Martha? Huh? Chris graduating. My. It's just like paying for a piano on time. Fifteen years and it's yours. <laughs> Remember, Edgar, don't talk business. She's told everybody that you're a brain specialist. Yeah, why do you keep saying that? I'm a veterinarian and I'm proud of it. You may be, but why should Chris start out with an inferiority complex? Oh. You know, to yourself you may be a dog doctor, to your dogs you may be a dog doctor, but to me you are a psychiatrist. Yeah, uh, Martha, please, come down with the common people. I don't know why all this rush. Look, we've still got 15 minutes to make that 1057. We're not going by train. I've ordered a limousine. A limousine? What for? Now, Edgar, you know, we really couldn't, really. Yeah, I know. What would the 400 think? Uh -huh. Here it is. Yeah, my goodness, look at that. I'll bet that thing costs $10. 10 15 The chauffeur has on a uniform. Oh, well, that's all right. But, what? Well, you've spent all of my money on Chris anyhow. I suppose a few dollars more or less won't make any difference. Well, I'm only trying to give her the advantages I've missed. Yeah, well, we won't quarrel about it. The main thing is that Chris is coming home to live with us, huh? <laughs> oh, I can hardly believe it, you know. <laughs> oh, my sweet. <laughs> What's the matter? You know, Edgar, you smell a little doggy. Yeah, well, I can't help that, Martha. Let me I... just sprinkle a little tiny bit of this new mown hay oh, on you. Oh, not here. No, wait. No. Nobody will ever notice. Martha. It smacks of the country. Martha, it smells please, just I... like you came out of a cornfield. I don't want that stuff. <laughs> Precious lamb. Yeah, Chris. Good to see you. Oh, you too, darling. Yeah, Chris, I'm here too. Oh, Pop. Oh, Edgar, look. Yeah. What, what? Well, what is that? That's my diploma. Oh, what Edgar, the... that precious ribbon. My, oh, my, my, darling, my. that was worth the whole tuition. Hi. <laughs> Edgar, attend to the chauffeur. Yes. Uh, that'll be uh, ten dollars, won't it? No, it won't, mister. It'll be fifteen. Oh, yes, five dollars for the uniform. Yes, that's right. I remember that. <laughs> it's a very pretty uniform, too. Thank you. Run up and change your clothes quickly. All right, Mom. Oh, Chris, uh, let me have your baggage checks. I'll take care of them for you. Well, that's sweet of you, Pop, but I checked my things straight to the boat. To the boat? What does she mean by that? Well, Chris and I are sailing for Honolulu tonight. Honolulu? Well, what for? Now, there's no use upsetting you. You'd cause the scene and spoil the whole graduation ceremony. Baggage, man. The trunks are right up at the head of the stairs. Yeah, Martha, 
Martha, what's the idea of this? Now, there what? isn't time, dear. Yes, I know, but you said you were simply going to spend a weekend at the lake. Are you sure they'll be delivered on board at 7 o'clock? They're practically seasick right now, lady. Martha, will you kindly explain this to me? I, I... Dear, you're in the way. Yeah, I know. Well, it's about time. Now, what's the meaning of this Honolulu business? I tell you, it certainly gets my nanny. Chris finally comes back, and what happens? You drag her off again. She's been in this house exactly one month in four years. This isn't a home, this is a waiting room in a railroad station. Oh, Beano. Well, I tell you, this time I'm not going to stand for it. I'm putting my foot down. I don't see where, with animals all over the house. Uh oh, Please. look, look. If you've got a minute to spare, would you mind introducing me to my own daughter? We might eventually become good friends. You're being very old-fashioned. Chris has her own life to live. Oh, that's been your story for the past 15 years. Boarding schools, ranches, camps, finishing school. Anything else to go, mister? No. Yes, those three bags. Yeah, that's what I said, those three bags. Gee, you're cute. You too, Blackie. You're pretty. little fellas, aren't they? And hungry, too. <laughs> here, now, here. Here, now, stop your crowding now. Wait a minute. <laughs> that one looks like a mother. Which one? Mm. What's this one? There's something wrong somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Whose dog is she? Uh, she belongs to the grocer. I keep her here when, uh, <clears throat> well, the kennels makes her nervous, you know. Gee, she's cute. Yeah, I think she's a he, though, Chris. <laughs> you, uh, you remember this room, don't you? Of course I do. And there's McKinty. I'd say she was pretty well preserved for her age, wouldn't you? Well, you see, you never grew up in this room, Chris. And I guess McGinty never grew up either. Look, dear, why... Why don't you stick around home for a while? Oh, but Mother and I have planned this trip for months. Well, where was I all that time? Oh, well, the season isn't very long, Pop. Oh, now, please, now, don't talk like your mother. You know, I've made plans too, Chris. What do you say we have a family reunion, just you and I, huh? Oh, you could have a lot of fun down at the kennels. And uh, if I took a week off, we could go fishing. I know the most beautiful place. They have horses there, you can ride. And the streams, it just... Oh, there you are, Chris. Already we're late. Now, let me see. Have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. But then you could always send things on to me. Goodbye, Edgar. Take care of yourself, darling. We'll miss you. Write me. Goodbye, Pop. Goodbye, Chris. Come along, Chris. Is that the nearest thing to a horse you can bring home? You'd better get him out of the house while he's still a puppy. Goodbye, Pop. I'm going to hold you to that fishing date. I hope so, Chris. Have a nice time, girls. Well, champ, it looks like you and I are going to have dinner alone tonight, huh? Mason? Uh, 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 yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> well, I'm Nimsy Nicholson from the Daily Eagle. Oh, how do you do, sir? Mm -hmm. Well, something wrong with the little fellow there? Oh, heavens, no, no. He's just had the sniffles a few days, but oh. it's nothing serious. Oh, I see. <laughs> Did you read my article in the morning paper? Uh, the morning paper? Oh, you're a newspaper man. Oh, yes. Well, no, no, I, I didn't, no. Oh, well, you don't read the society news. <laughs> well, sometimes I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, my Honolulu correspondent sent me a choice tidbit about Freddie and your daughter. Well, it's an open secret now. See, they're just sizzling about each other. Did you say my daughter? Don't be coy, Doctor. The whole island is buzzing. They'll be married in a fortnight, and I thought that a statement from you, her father, would be quite a scoop. Oh, I see. I see. Mm-hmm. Who is this Freddy? Freddy Browning? Why, you're pulling my leg, Doctor. Why, he's the catch of the season. Now, wouldn't you just like to give me, oh, the tiniest statement? Yes, I would, Mr. Nichols. Good, good. You might say that I think newspapers are wonderful. They'll even tell you when your own daughter's going to get married. Uh, wait a minute, I'll walk down the street with you. Oh, fine, fine. Oh, Joe. Don't 
worry. He won't hurt you. He's taking no chances. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Exciting match. Oh, Betty really made it exciting, Mother, being nice to me. Oh, not at all, darling. You deserved every point you made. Well, how about cocktails? We'll be ready in about 20 minutes. All That's right. what it takes, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. You see, that'll be exactly 20 minutes. Not that it matters, Mother, but between us, I could have beaten him on a pair of crutches. Now, don't be tactless. Most men think they're superior. It simplifies matters to let them go on believing. Beano! No, it can't be. I can't believe it. Well, where have you been? Edgar. Why, hello, Martha. My, my, my. Hello, Chris, dear. Hello, Pa. I hope this is the only dog you brought along. Huh? Oh, I think I'm going to faint. Okay, sit down, Mother. If you don't mind telling me, what are you doing here? Why, my dear, haven't you heard? What? what? Why, Nibsy of the Daily Something or Other said that the island was simply buzzing about Chris and Freddy. And as a father, I thought I'd come over here and meet the lad. Oh, the lad. Well, I'd like to have you meet Chris's father, Dr. Mason, Mr. Browning. Oh, this is a great pleasure, Doctor. <laughs> I'm glad to know you, Mr. Browning. You must be playing hooky from the office, eh? Oh, I never dreamed that Dr. Mason would leave his practice to one of his assistants. <laughs> well, how about a drink? Waiter, you know, this old coolie how is the most interesting thing of the island. Oh, is that so? Dad'll have to learn to do the hula, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I imagine I'd look well in a grass skirt. <laughs> well, there's a dance, Doctor. Uses every part of the anatomy except the brain. Your specialty. Uh, Mr. Browning, uh, what's this I hear about uh, my daughter and your son? My son? Edgar, Mr. Browning has no son. No son? Oh, I'm sorry. It's my mistake. My mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> no son. Mm. My, my, you look almost as old as I do. Of course, that costume, I imagine, takes off a few years. <laughs> Edgar, wouldn't you like to come and see the rest of the hotel? Yes, Pop, you really ought to. No, 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 no. Mr. Browning and I have a lot in common. <laughs> uh, what was your college class, uh, <clears throat> Freddie? Harvard, 1916. Well, there you see, we're not so very far apart. I'm Johnson, 1910. Who? You know, Johnson's Hopkins. Oh, now, surely you must have heard of Johnson, the finest veterinary school in the United States. Vet? Dr. Mason is a horse brain specialist. Edgar, you must come out in the garden. Uh, yes. It's a lovely garden. <laughs> well, we'll see each other again, shall we? <laughs> Goodbye, old timer. <clears throat> we'll get together later on. We'll play some chess, hmm? <clears throat> Excuse me. You did that deliberately. Ah, with malice aforethought. Do you realize his family came over on the Mayflower? His family? <laughs> yeah, I'll bet ten to one he made the trip himself. There's nothing to argue about. All that matters is Chris loves him. Oh, Martha, that's ridiculous. They're about as romantic looking as a couple of oysters on the half shell. You know why Chris is impressed? Because Freddie Browning can supply all the fancy doodads you've made her believe very important. Oh, I didn't expect you to understand the importance of breeding it. Yeah, you mean money, don't you? I suppose hitting the jackpot means marrying her off to that jerk. Jerk? What's that? Oh, it's just a word. It means jerk. <clears throat> it's a vulgar word.
Oh, are you here again? Oh, come on in. The water's fine. Go away. You're scaring the fish. There's no fish here. What do you mean, no fish? You just had a shark on the lawn. Oh. Well, you jumped as though you had a whale on the end of that line. I did. They scared him away. Catch anything? Sure. Oh, my, my. That's amazing. You think you could find a pan big enough to cook her in? <laughs> well, I might have to cut it in two. <laughs> you vacationing? Yeah, sort of, half and half. Mm. Those girls were kind of cute, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You must have sex appeal. You kidding? You married? No. No girl? No, I'm just sort of playing the field. Ah. Uh, you working? You got a job? Uh, not at the moment. Why? How would you like to make $50? What, with my sex appeal? <laughs> well, that's all you'd need. Huh? Oh, no, 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 wait. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't be talking to you at all if it wasn't for Chris. Who's Chris? She's my daughter. Oh. She's going to marry a stuffed shirt who's old enough to be her father. Well, there's no accounting for tastes. Yeah, but she doesn't love him. And you're just the man to break it up. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I see, but uh, it's a little out of my line, mister. I'm strictly an amateur. Yeah, I'll make it $100. Say, so you're really worried about this daughter of yours, aren't you? Well, I'll tell you, I hate to say this, but she's selfish and spoiled. She's full of a lot of cockeyed notions. It's her mother's fault. Well, why worry? She doesn't sound worth saving to me. Now, wait a minute. Nobody asked your opinion. Yeah, what well, you just said. Yeah, but that's my right. I'm her father. <laughs> OK, then. <laughs> well, what do you say? Will you take the job? No, I'm sorry. I'd like to help you out, but I'm not the type. Glad to have met you. Thank you. Hello, Pop. You. Hello, Chris. We're just going for a spin in my speedboat. Would you care to join us? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, all right. We'll see you later, Pop. All right. Say, uh, you know, Mr. I I'd hate to leave you in a fix like this. I really would. Uh huh? Let's go up and cook that fish of yours, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Is Mr. Lorne on board? Yes, sir. In the cabin, sir. Thank you. Mike! Mike! The whole crop sold. Good price? Ten percent over last year. Yeah, nice going. I don't know. You tell me to be interested in the business. What's so hard about it? Nothing. You ought to do more of it. I can't be bothered. It's too easy. Go to Hilo. Ten minutes in the bank, we make a fortune. Yeah. Takes you ten minutes to sell it and me ten months to grow it. Oh, we're partners, aren't we? I share the profits, you do the work. Besides, you'd like it here. I don't. Never could stand the place. Say, uh, those are beautiful pants, Mike. Thanks, pal. Your shirt, too. Don't mention it. What's the idea? Going to the hotel. The hotel? Well, I thought I was a playboy at this firm. What's happened to your ideals? The great Democrat who hates the idle rich. Can't it? Nice old guy invited me to dinner, that's all. Oh. He, uh, couldn't have a daughter. Well, come to think of it, he has. Uh, ordinary looking. Oh, I'm sure of that. That's why you put on a tuxedo for the first time in years. <laughs> I, uh, think I'll drop over and take a look. Oh, why don't you? Maybe you can take her off my hands. Teach her the hula. You want me to go? No, thanks. She must be very ordinary. Well, see what yourself. Say, Mike, are you putting on weight? No, why? Well, my coat doesn't look too large for you anymore. Oh, uh, I had it cut down to fit me. Why? Mason. <laughs> Why, Mike! How are you? Mike Lord, well, 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 fancy meeting you here. <laughs> oh, uh, <clears throat> uh, meet my wife, Mrs. Mason. How do you do? And uh, my daughter, Chris. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? And, uh, oh, this is Freddie Browning, my how do you Lord. Do? So this is Chris. Hey, babe, uh, pull up a chair, sit oh, down. But Edgar, it's a very small table. Oh, no need to apologize, Mrs. Mason. I think we can manage it. I hope you're comfortable, Mr. Lord. Oh, very thanks. 
See, I thought you were just a fond father sounding off, but you're right. <laughs> She's a knockout, isn't she? Are you here on business or pleasure, Mr... Um, no. Well, I didn't know myself, but I think pleasure, Mr. Browning. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd like to dance this one. Go ahead, darling. Oh, you would. You don't mind, do you? Thank you. Excuse us. Now, where did you pick that up? Uh, uh, just a lonesome wayfarer, my dear. Lonesome? I wonder what he would do if somebody encouraged him. Yeah, but don't let. Just notice with the best-looking couple on the floor. <laughs> Any more of that and we'll be on the floor. <laughs> So you didn't really want to dance with the old boy, did you? Who is he, your uncle? Mr. Browning happens to be my fiancé. Oh, no, it couldn't. <laughs> You've got a swell sense of you. <laughs> There's no excuse for downright offensiveness. Oh, father's in the habit of picking up strays. Well, you didn't appear unhappy about it. About what? You were dancing with him. Well, what else could I do? Freddy, you're jealous. Well, shouldn't I be? Of course not. You know, Chris, I've been thinking about our marriage. Have you made up your mind, Wayne? Hello, folks. Certainly for on the spot. Beautiful night, isn't it? Very. Look at those stars. Don't you feel like reaching up and grabbing a handful? No. Or does the night air make you feel a bit stiff? <laughs> well, good night. What's the meaning of that? Yeah, oh, how ridiculous. Well, what does it say? Nothing, not a thing. Well, it seems rather extraordinary. I wouldn't want to say... What wouldn't you want to say? Well, people don't usually write notes with nothing in them. Why not? People collect bottle tops, don't they? Ditch Grandpa and meet me in the bath. Just a minute, who is this Grandpa? I hope you'll be specific with Mr. Browning's eggs. Yes, madame. They'll be one minute, 50 seconds, exactly. Yes, he likes them just warm. Morning, Mom. Morning. Morning, Pat. Oh, good morning, honey. Hello! That must be Mr. Browning now. I have a horrible suspicion it isn't. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Mrs. Mason, Mr. Mason. Good morning, Mike. Crackerjack of a day, isn't it? A humdinger. Breakfast. Thanks, Mrs. Mason. Oh, excuse me, won't you sit down? Orange juice. Oh, Mr. Lord, that is Mr. Browning's orange juice. Oh, really? Well, no use in letting it sit here and evaporate. A waiter, another order of orange juice for Mr. Browning. Yes, sir. I hope you don't mind my barging in this way. Oh, not at all. You must learn to overcome your shyness. Oh, that's why I came over here, to see the world, get rid of my inhibitions, and uh, meet charming people. <laughs> it's too bad you didn't let it go at that. Yes, I think there's a difference between meeting people and strangling them, don't you? Uh-huh. How about some tennis? Thank you very much, but I have a date to watch Mr. Browning play polo. Does he play? On what? A wheelchair? <laughs> hmm. Hello? What, another one? Is he kidding? Well, good morning, Mr. Browning. Glad you dropped over. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, darling. Hello. Hiya, Freddy, old boy. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Oh, say, I'm afraid I have your seat. Will you just sit down? I'll drag up this chair and sit on this side of Chris. <clears throat> there. I think it'll be better. Yeah. Well, this is much better. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I forgot I drank most of your fruit juice. But there's more coming. We'll split the next order. That's fair, isn't it? I suppose so. By the way, isn't polo a bit strenuous for a man of your age, sir? <coughs> <coughs> I don't see why. After all, life begins at 30. <coughs> <laughs> Parachute didn't open. Is Miss Mason in? Well, uh, she was. Hello, Freddy. You again. Are you picketing the place? Very well acted, Chris, but I think I deserve some explanation. Well, that's a heels remark, You sir. keep out of this. Browning, at all costs, let's avoid scandal. As a couple of gentlemen, we can keep this out of the newspapers. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Steady, darling. He knows everything. Like a clumsy idiot, I fell off the balcony. You fell off... Chris, under the circumstances... Circumstances? You mean you believe Well, I... what else can I believe? You have my word that nothing has happened. But it would take a big man to believe it. Thank you. 
I'd prefer to hear you say that, Chris. Browning, a marriage not founded on faith isn't worth that. I'm waiting, Chris. Well, that's sweet of you, Freddy. Having jumped to the nastiest conclusion possible, you're now willing to listen. Well, I, I didn't really believe... Goodbye, that... Freddy. Yes, but Chris, I... Goodbye, Freddy. Uh, nothing so ugly as a jealous man. Did you see his eyes? They burned like a couple of ghost signals. Did they? Well, you were too angry to notice. I don't blame you. You're very upset. I'm delighted. Well, you should be. Think what your life would have been. Your butler opening your mail, your personal maid rifling your handbag, trapped in a gilded cage. Now, with me, life would be very simple. A two-room flat, romantic household budget, standing over a hot stove. Were you on the balcony? Yes. Did you know it leads to my bedroom? I did not. I was only hoping. Oh, so you admit it. Why? That's a personal question. Personal? What do you think my bedroom is, the lobby of the hotel? Chris, I'm going to make a clean breast of it all. Oh, you sound like an idiot. It's all very simple. So you do a sensational hula, and, and I play tennis. So I thought we could exchange lessons. On the balcony? No, I was getting to that. You see, Chris, I think you're very beautiful and a darn good egg. And we're both young. And Honolulu's romantic. Well, that's it. I had an uncontrollable impulse to climb the balcony very quietly into your room. Oh, I know the scene. I'd be seated at my dressing table combing my golden tresses. That's it. Then I'd tiptoe up behind you, put my arms around you, and kiss you. Say, that wasn't a bad idea. Making me as silly as you are. I'm going back in the house. Hey, wait a minute. People don't kiss each other and then just run off. Don't they? Not if the kiss means anything. Well, that's all the more reason, unless you want... Unless what? Oh, let's not get serious. Good night, Romeo. You mean you're going to decide when to be serious? Turn it on and off like a shower? I'm sorry. It's my fault. I think you're swell. Uh-huh. Swell but poor. There are certain things I've always wanted. And I'm not on the blueprint, is that it? Well, that sounds pretty cold, but that's it, Mike. No soap? Edgar? Uh, uh, yes, dear, just getting a little air, that's all. Precious, you and Freddie have just had a lover's quarrel. It isn't too late. I'm sure it can be patched up. Why don't you marry him, Mother? Oh, no, that'd be going too far. You... This is a terrible shock to us, Chris. Don't worry, Pop. It isn't important. Not important? You were practically married to him. <laughs> Two more payments and he'd have been yours. Oh, Mother, can't we forget about it? If you'd only speak to him. It's too late now. Our Browning just checked out. If uh, I can be of any assistance in this hour of bereavement, I'd be delighted. Young man, I think you had something to do with this. Something? <laughs> Everything. Don't tell me somebody else is stealing my credit. Uh, 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 Mike, I think you'd better hop along now. Huh? Well, I just dropped over for the hundred. The what? Uh, uh, why, uh, sure. <laughs> he wants to borrow a hundred, dear. Certainly, sure. What do you mean, borrow? Browning's out, the job's finished. I'd like to get paid off. Uh, uh, have a heart, will you, Mike? Later, uh, later, Mike. Paid off for what? But didn't he tell you? <laughs> well, I'm Honolulu's number one romance buster. Last work, too. Three days from start to finish. Oh, I think I'll faint. You were paid for everything you did? It was for the best, Chris, believe me. That night at dinner? Last night? Well, no extra charge for the stuff in the garden. What extra stuff in what garden? Never mind, Mother. I think you'd better go. Okay. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you tell your friends about my service. You never can tell when they'll Get leave. out. You can send me a check, Doc. Good day. Today. Now, uh, I think I'd better go out and look for the dog, don't you? <clears throat> the dog is right here. No, where? Is it? Oh, hello, Bino. <laughs> I didn't see you and I going out for a walk, Bino. Come on. Sit down. Yes, dear. Now start explaining. Uh, 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 you see, uh, uh, well. Why hang around here feeling sorry for yourself? Come with me. New Orleans, Mardi Gras. Maybe Marjorie has a sister. No, I'd better stay here. Business. Well, then marry the girl and get her over with. I wish I could. Why can't you? You love her, she loves you, she wants money, you've got money. It's very simple. No, it isn't. I'd spend the rest of my life wondering exactly why she married me. Whether it was because she loved me or whether... Oh, so you want proof. Where's your romance? You kiss a girl, you want a receipt. Me, I'll take a girl like Marjorie. I'm positive she's untrue to me. That's why my mind's at ease. Well, Mike, get drunk, forget it. 
Hey, there is a way I can find out. Sure you can. But you've got to stay and help, Alex. Oh, not me, brother. I hate the place. Oh, it's a swell plan. <clears throat> Write me a letter about it. Now, you wouldn't let a pal down, would you? Anytime. Didn't I see you through college writing your English papers? I'll never forget it, pal. Goodbye. Help! Help! Throw me a life preserver, Mike! Help! Help! Mike, I can't swim! Put the ladder down, Mike! I don't want to drown! No! Help! I can't swim! You can't? Then what are you doing in all that water? I'll make a deal with you for this life preserver. No! You're in no position to dicker. Throw it! Maybe you better stay, Alex. Oh, shut up! Come on. Come on. Come on, a little closer. A little closer. Come on, Alex. Come on, Mike. You know I can't swim. Oh. Haven't changed your mind, have you? No. Oh, I'd rather drown. You see, uh, Hawaii was annexed to the United States in 1898. But even in those days, my family never liked city life. So instead, we moved to the interior and settled on 50,000 acres. Then as the family grew, naturally, we needed more land for breathing space. Mm, naturally? Yes, I can imagine how hemmed in you must have felt. So we added gradually another 50,000 acres. It was much more comfortable. Yeah, it, uh, it would provide the dog with a bit of run, at least. Oh, uh, my husband. Or is it? Oh, uh, how do you do? Oh, how do you do? You're Mr. Marino. How do you do, Miss Marino? And you grow sugar on all that land, Mr. Marino? Oh, it's just one of my interests. Oh, that extra 50,000 acres can't be more than a hobby, Mr. Marino. Do you think you could arrange to have us see your plantation? I've always wondered how they grow those perfectly square little pieces of sugar. Yes. <laughs> it would be fascinating, wouldn't it, Edgar? If you think so, Martha. Yes, uh, uh, it would, Mrs. Mason, but, uh, but you see... And, Chris, uh, you'd like to come along, too, wouldn't you? Oh, I'd be delighted. But you must understand, Mrs. Mason, this plantation is far in the jungle. There are inconveniences. Otherwise, I'd be glad to have you visit me. Oh, it sounds exciting. I'm sure you're exaggerating the difficulty. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. it would be so nice to wake up in the morning to the sound of the thrush, yes. or a jump in the lake, or a romp in the woods. I love to romp in the woods. Yes. Uh, Martha, your romping days are over, I think. <clears throat> what were you saying? How about a swim, Miss Mason? Will you excuse us, please? Yes, yes, certainly. <laughs> Mr. Marino is so sweet, isn't he? Well, he has 100,000 acres of sugar, Martha. Yeah, the mere thought of that ought to give you diabetes. My friend, I'm through playing your games. How'd it go? Did they fall for it? That mother, she was down my throat all morning. Trace my family back to Christopher Columbus. Our plantation is not 10,000 acres, but 100,000. By the way, where is our plantation? Good. Now, your next move... But wait. Mrs. Mason has invited themselves to visit the plantation. She wants to leave tomorrow morning. It's marvelous. Not for me. Marjorie is waiting in New Orleans. Now, it's about time you saw the place that feeds you. You'll love it. The romance of sugar. Mike, for your sake. You're making a mistake. This girl is too nice. You liked her, huh? Well, not so very ordinary. But take my advice. She doesn't belong in a laboratory for an experiment. Oh, that's my department. The trip to the plantation is beautiful, Alex. I'll arrange all the transportation. I'm not going. Come on, we're pals, aren't we? You've got to do this for me. Didn't I write all your English papers in college? Yes, and didn't I flunk? Never mind, please. Uh, Fino, please.
Mr. Moreno. I received a telephone call about the visitors. Oh, very good. Say, I didn't know you were meeting us halfway. What do you mean, halfway? This is it. Are you kidding? Brother, you're here. Go on, say something. Welcome to the Moreno Plantation. My foreman will show you to your quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we get out now, I think, Mom. What are you doing here? A uh, small island, isn't it? Just got the job. Oh, you're very talented. Well, it was a chance to turn honest. I took it. This way, please. Uh, for my sake, Chris, don't tell Mr. Marino about us. He might not like it. You're asking favors of me after what happened at the hotel? Oh. Aren't we a little off the main highway? Oh, thanks awfully. There's another one in there someplace. I'll dive in for it. Apayeki uh. Kahali, huh? Mr. Marino, does it rain like this all the time here? Mrs. Mason, this is just a fog. A fog? I wonder what the folks back home are doing. That's the thing that bothers me. Oh, oh that's fine. That's good. Uh, I don't know what the folks back home are doing, but I certainly know what you are doing. What do you think you are, a mud hen? Yes, thank you. Well, what do you think? I'd like to tell you. Well, come right in. Come right in. This is your suite. On a clear day, you can get a fine view of the swamp. Nice, cozy little place you have here. When did Tarzan move out? And this is your room, Miss Mason. Well, I'll see you folks at dinner. Yeah. That's the best bed for miles around. The witch doctor loaned it to us. Oh, he did. Well, do you mind if I let a little air in this dump? Ow! <laughs> What does he want? He wants to know if you'd like to borrow a nightgown from his wife. No. N no, thank you. Walkie dog. Well, see you for dinner, eh? Shall I dress? Well, boss. Your guests are quite comfortable. Not my guests. I brought them here and through. Well, what's wrong? Ox cart. <coughs> Did you ever ride in one? Only a diseased mind could conceive an idea like that. Oh, don't worry. The rest will be easy. I wish I were in your place. What do you mean now? You're going to make love to her. I am? Look, Alex, it's like this. On the one hand, primitive surroundings, unbearable conditions. But nevertheless, you, a millionaire, make unbearable love to her. On the other hand, there's I, the poor but proud lad with nothing to offer but his heart. Catch on? Wait a minute, my friend. I don't like to bother your experiment. But what makes you think my love making is so unbearable? <laughs> well, it's just that you're you're not the type. <laughs> oh, Doc. Oh, good evening, Mike. Hello. I thought you'd never speak to me again. You mean because you spilled the beans in front of my family, huh? That was a dirty trick. Well, forget it. I I think I know the reason why you did it. That's the reason. <laughs> Look, uh. Don't you think you'll find Alec rather tough competition? Just leave it to me, Doc. I'd like to prove to Chris that love is thicker than sugar. I've got everything under control. Yeah, well, I hope so. Yoo-hoo! Mike! Uh-oh, there's my wife. Not a word about this. Come on, Bino, quick. Uh, yes, Mrs. Mason? Mike, you know, I'm really quite worried. I may need your service. You know, you mentioned if at any time, and I'm prepared to meet your fee. Oh, what's the matter? Well, Chris and Mr. Marino, I'm afraid they might get serious. Oh, I think that would be very desirable. Oh, I don't. Oh, I don't want my daughter to spend the rest of her life camping out. <laughs> I wouldn't worry. Can't you imagine a palace rising up out of the jungle? I can imagine it. Can Mr. Marino? Well, if Chris doesn't like it, she'll know what to do. I don't quite get that. Mrs. Mason, even right here in the jungle, a young bride's tears could perform miracles. See, tears will flow like a flood. Ah! Oh! Mike! Mike! 
Oh, maki maki oi. Ika kaweli. Oh, well, thanks, Doc. That's very nice of you. What does he want now? Uh, it's Mrs. Witch again. She wants to know if you'd like to borrow some Kleenex. Oh, no. No, thank you. Okay, Doc. Swell dish. Uh, so long. Why doesn't somebody tell him Halloween's over? What for? If he were exposed to your civilization, I'd feel sorry for him. Meaning what? I got it. Thanks. Meaning they'd like to see the doctor wearing double-breasted suits, playing the stock market, winding up on the veranda of your swanky hotel, drinking martinis, the soul of the man destroyed. Got it. Thanks. In this fable of the witch doctor, you're not getting personal by any chance, are you? Thanks. Me getting personal? Not at all. Mike, there wasn't time to tell you how I really felt. You mean about the blueprint? Oh, don't use that word. Try to understand. I'm sorry it happened. Thanks. Why, you were perfectly right. It's just as easy to marry a nice rich man, so why not? Think of all the trouble you spare yourself. No standing over a hot stove. You know all about me. Well, enough to admire your good sense. The old theory that the hero has to work himself up from the bottom is the buck. I'd like to frame that bright saying for my bedroom. I'll even autograph it. You know, Marino's worth a fortune, Chris, and I'll help you land it. Don't bother. But I feel I owe it to you. I'm leaving here in the morning. It's impossible. The road's washed out. How's that for luck? We've practically got him trapped. Say, would you mind holding still for a moment? respects and he's waiting to take you on a tour of the plantation. Thanks. Uh, if I might suggest, I could uh, make a few little inquiries about Mr. Marino's personal habits for you. Don't bother. No bother. <laughs> you know, the easiest way to a man's heart is to find out the little things he likes best. I said don't bother. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, set him up in the other alley. Must have been afraid. What's that? What, what, what is it? What's that? Who put that there? What is Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. your bath, Martha. My what? What am I going to do with the other foot? Yeah. Oh. Do you ride well? Yes, very. Yeah, he likes a good horsewoman. Do you know anything about sugar? No, you wouldn't. Well, the next best thing is to ask questions. You know, does sugar this, does sugar that? He'd love you for it. Get the idea? I get it. And another thing, he loves to have his head scratched. Alex. Ah, good morning, Miss Mason. Good morning. It's a lovely morning, isn't it? Ah, usted es más linda que una flor. Do you know what that means? Why, I haven't the faintest idea. It means you are more beautiful than a flower. Good morning. Oh, uh, hello, Mike. Uh, the stables are filthy, Mike. Have them cleaned. Yes, sir. I'll have them vacuumed immediately. Shall we go? Yes. Oh, darling, how did you know? Oh. Why don't you wash it? Oh, so you're awake, huh? Good. Mike, you and I have to have a serious talk. Shoot. I'm afraid your experiment has gone all wrong. In what way? 
Yeah, she likes me. Mrs. Mason? No. Chris. So do I. You're a nice fellow. I like her. Who wouldn't? She's wonderful. I think I'm falling in love with her. Hey, wait a minute. You weren't supposed to do that. Can I dictate to my heart? Well, what about Marjorie? Marjorie who? Of all the dirty double cross. Wait a minute. I'm doing the only honest thing. I didn't have to tell you. What's honest about taking advantage of a setup I put you in? The reason for the serious talk. From now on, I think we should conduct this thing legitimately. What do you mean, legitimately? No more tricks. May the best man win. Why, you part-time Casanova, if she did marry you, it would only be for your money. That's your opinion. And supposing she does want money. Every woman has something wrong with her. You can't be narrow-minded about those things. Well, I once knew a woman who, who liked popcorn at, at midnight. So this is the end of a beautiful friendship, eh? Why, are you afraid of competition? I like you. Then stop being so cute and tell her who you really are. I have no objections. Wise guy. You know darn well she wouldn't look at me again if I did. Well, I know it's a problem, Mike. Maybe it's for the best. If she marries me, then you know she wasn't the girl for you after all. And if she marries you, then you've got what you wanted. It's very simple. Still pals? Yeah, it's still pals. Would you like a cup of coffee with that? I take it back. Yeah, it ought to happen any minute now. Yeah. Blue plates right on time. Come in. Good morning, Good friends. We recommend, recommend blue plate number two. Our food, food is the best, best in the whole southwest. What can we do for you? Mm. You can take out these breakfast dishes. Yes, sir. Eggs again. Mr. Marino, your ulcers. And from now on, attend to your regular duties. Yes, sir. Uh, today is wash day, isn't it, sir? Yes, that's all. Yes, sir. What we need in this place is a traffic signal. Uh, uh. Oh, Edgar, get up. Hey, Chris. I've been looking all over for you. Did you finish the laundry? No, I'm serious. You've got to get off this plantation as fast as you can. Why? I'm enjoying every minute of it. It's Marino. I was all wrong about him. Really? Well, we all make mistakes about people. Oh, Chris, I've always tried to be helpful, haven't I? Very. Say, I never did thank you for that head-scratching tip. He nearly swooned. When do they cut the sugar cane? When it whistles. Will you listen to me? But I've got to know all about sugar. Now, what am I going to talk to Alex about? Don't talk to him. Now, that's my advice. Straight from the heart and absolutely unprofessional. And lose my great opportunity? Do you know what I just discovered about that guy? He spends ten months of the year in this dump. Oh, it's quite beautiful. Yes, I can see a palace rising out of this jungle. Palace? <laughs> He's too cheap to put in plumbing. He screams at the sight of running water. He's a miser. And that tradition line of his rot. Oh, but very romantic. And he is good looking. Nice teeth, lovely hair. All right, so he's gorgeous. But you've got to be practical. By all means. I realize Alex has his faults, but after all, a young bride's tears can perform miracles. Huh? My mother told me that. Hey, maybe he is gorgeous. No, you don't. No, you don't. Give me those pants. Why? We've always shared your clothes, haven't we? Uh, no, give me those pants. Take them off. That's a dirty trick. You know I depended on them. Now, these are my best flannels. What's Take the them matter? Off. You afraid I look halfway decent, huh? Don't make any difference. Give me the pants. Oh, some other time, pal. I've got to look my best tonight. Why? I'm uh, proposing to her. Chris, darling, we haven't known each other very long, but there isn't anyone else, is there? Oh, no, Alex, there isn't. Well, you thought of marriage, of course. Well, every girl has. Chris, uh, will you marry me? Mr. Marino, it's open. It's open. What's open? The road. It's all fixed. You can leave whenever you want to. In fact, right away. I get the ox cart. No one is leaving, thank you. Your man is very conscientious. Uh, but you could get back to town away from all this. I'm in no hurry. You may go, Mike. Yes, sir. I just thought I'd tell you the road's open. So. In very good condition. Chris, you haven't answered me. Well, let me think about it, Alex. 
But Chris, darling, Good I Good night. Could... Mike, answer the phone. Yes, sir. Hello? Oh, uh, just a minute. It's for you, Mr. Moreno, a telegram. Take it. Yes, sir. Oh, go ahead. Alexander Moreno, Moreno Plantation. All your orders canceled. Sugar market overloaded. See no way to avoid foreclosure. Bank demands full payment on loan. Advise, signed, Cyrus J. Bixby. Thank you. Impossible. What could have happened? Well, I don't understand business, Mr. Marino, but there must be some way out. What's $700,000? Where are we... Where am I going to get it? Did you say the road was open? Excuse me. Let me see that. Whatever happens, Mr. Marino, you can always depend on me. I don't doubt it. No more security these days. One good crop, and you're ruined. Does this mean Alex is, shall we say, broke? Perhaps not broke, but badly bent. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh uh, you want to faint, don't you, Martha? Yes, I do, but I think I'll wait until after I pack. Come along, Edgar. Ah, your mother is becoming more subtle every day. That's the way it goes. I feel sorry for him. So do I. But he'll make a living, posing for toothpaste ads. <laughs> Can I help you pack? Why? Well, no use hanging around, is there? Sugar market gone to pot? Oh, of course not. We've got to be practical, don't we? Well, you can't forget that blueprint. It never called for household budgets and standing over that hot stove. I'm not at all sure that it didn't. You're not sure? Oh, you look surprised. You couldn't have been wrong about me. I need your advice again, Mr. Lord. Professional advice. What about? Uh, I'm very fond of Mr. Marino. He's asked me to marry him. You want my advice? The loss of his money naturally changes things. And I'm not quite sure what to do, you see. What would you do? If I were you, I'd stick. Thanks. That's what I thought. I'm glad we finally agree about something. Mike, these orders can't be canceled. I've got signatures on them. I'll sue them for everything they've got. What are you worrying about? Oh, nothing. We're only bankrupt, that's all. I know. I'm going to borrow some money and take them to court. I'm going to go to Hunnell. I told you not to wear my flannels. She's going to marry you, Alex. Yeah, well, I'm going to... What did you say? I said she's going to marry you. She is? On what? Mike, you're broke. I mean, I'm broke. Forget it. The whole thing was a gag. I sent that telegram myself. You... You sent the... Oh! That's terrific! That's, that's marvelous! You, you mean that she and me... Yes, she probably wants to tell you herself. Oh, say, that's, that's wonderful. That, that's wonderful, Mike! That's, say, Mike, you can keep the pants. I give them to you. Oh! Hello, Mom! What do you mean, Mom? I shut up, too. Young man. Hello, congratulations. Oh, then you know about the engagement. Know about it? I announced it. Your interference with Mr. Browning is responsible for this, and if you had the slightest sense of honor, you'd do something about it. Mrs. Mason, have you ever thought of how you'd look on a wall stuffed? Are you or are you not going to do something about it? Do you remember what I once told you about a young bride's tears? Yes, but Chris doesn't know her own mind. I think she does. I'll do anything, pay anything, as my husband did. Pay for what? Nothing. Not a thing. You'd better go, Martha. Edgar, don't you dare use that tone to me. Martha, you heard me. Go on. You amaze me. 
Say, what have you been eating, spinach? No, just the worm taking a detour, that's all. <laughs> I guess, Mike, you and I are a couple of pretty bad salesmen, aren't we, huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I've lost a mighty good daughter, and you've lost a mighty good wife. She's a swell gal, Doc. They'll make a go of it. Mm. Well, we can't say we didn't try, right? <laughs> Whenever you get to the mainland, drop in and see my kennels, will you? Thanks, I will. So long, Mike. Goodbye, Doc. I'll see you before we go. Right. Everything okie doke, Chief? Everything strictly not okie doke. Saddle up that chariot. Okie doke. Oh, hello, Pop. Yeah, hello. Hello. What do you mean, Pop? Hey, Mike, how did you send the telegram? <laughs> the bartender at the hotel phoned it in. Oh, very clever. Where are you going? Honolulu. I'll send a car out for the family. Fine, thanks. And Mike, do you mind if I use the boat for the honeymoon? No, that's a very good idea. Lots of luck, pal. And look, uh, you'll be at the wedding, of course, won't you? Now, don't worry about that. I'll be there. <laughs> Hello? Get me the Hilo Hotel. I want to speak to Sam, the bartender. Yes, Sam, the bartender. I think it's your deal, Martha. Uh, uh, your bid, I mean. Two spades. I pass. Three hearts. Uh, five spades. What? I double that. Ule Wahini? Yes, I'm leaving. Ule Swaldish? No, that's Alex's girl. I pass. I pass. Um, six diamonds. I double that. So long. Goodbye. Oh, Mrs. Mason, do you mind answering the phone? I can't seem to figure out Chris's hand. Close the door. Hello? Yes? Just a minute. It's a telegram for you, Mr. Marino. Oh, will you please take it? Go ahead. Yes? The bank? Did you say the bank? That other telegram? Disregarded? It was all a mistake? Why, certainly. Yes, I'll tell him. Yes, and don't you let it happen again. It seems that other telegram is all a mistake. You hadn't lost any money, and the sugar market's gone up 20 points. Well, I wonder what could have happened. <laughs> My, my, it seems people just can't get along without sugar. <laughs> oh, Chris, darling. It's wonderful, Alex. Do you realize what it means? New York, South America, anywhere you like. I'm so happy for you. And if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to have the wedding right away. Alex, do you still have this whole plantation? Of course. And all your money? Even more, all you can use. Then you don't really need me. Well, of course I need you. No, Alex, not really. You'll never need anyone to watch the budget, and budgets are very important, so please try to keep the price of sugar down, won't you? Goodbye, Alex. Yes, but, well, but, uh, Chris. Chris! Chris! Where are you going? Out to buy a stove, Mother, a good hot one. Chris! Martha! Sit down. Hey, I'll call Mucky Mucky. No, thanks, Doctor. I don't need any. Mike! Mike! Hey, Mike! Are you going my way, mister? Oh, that's fine. Do you mind if I come along? There's nothing much I can do about it now. Well, if you want to speed, I'll keep an eye out for cops. So you couldn't take it, huh? Nope. I thought so. Well, you were fooled for just a minute, though, weren't you? Well, I've been wrong before. Oh, that's big of you to admit it. Would you do me a favor? Uh-huh. Well, go right back. What for? I'll give you an inside tip. It was all just a bad daydream. He's not broke. So I heard. You know, Alex is sweet, but think of living there 10 months of the year with a man who hates running water. And he can't stand dogs. He'd never get along with Pop. And you love dogs, don't you, Mike? Get up!
love is beautiful. But I can't help wishing that boat were really his. It is his. Edgar, I'm going to faint, and this time I really mean it. Oh, 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 <laughs> it's well of Mr. Marino to loan us the yacht for our honeymoon, wasn't it? I don't know, darling. This isn't real to me anymore. You know, we've got to go looking for that two-room apartment with a kitchenette, the sensible budget, and the hot stove, remember? <laughs> <laughs> this yacht seems the wrong way to start. Uh, yes, I know, but sweetheart. Yes? Suppose I did get lucky and suddenly came into a lot of money. Ah, uh -huh. if you did, I'd divorce you. 